This is the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. We have assembled the world's finest sports and trivia dorks to prove once and for all that we are just as bad at this as we were at sports. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast, sports trivia for those of us who rode the pine. I'm your host, Matt. Today's game will be pitting the Bench Warmer team of Dan and Scott versus bench warmer Eric and our newcomer, Nicole Newlist. Or, I said that probably wrong. Nicole, how do you say your last name? Newlist. Oh, so I did say it pretty close. So, all right. <laughs> all right. Welcome to the bench, Nicole. Why don't you take a minute and uh, let us know a little bit about where you're from or what teams or sports that you root for or anything else that uh, you'd like to share. Sounds good. My name is Nicole Newlist. I live in Chicago, Illinois. My favorite sport is horse racing. I'm obsessed with it. I do it as a profession as well as just something for fun. I'm a chart caller at Arlington Park and Hawthorne Racetrack, which means I write the official records of the horse races. Then I also just do a lot of freelance writing around horse racing. I really, I just, I'm a track rat and I love it. As far as other sports and teams I like to follow, I mean, I did grow up in North Carolina. I had to pick a side. I picked correctly. Go Duke. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, good deal. Well, thanks and nice to meet you, Nicole. Good to um, meet you too. All right, Dan and Scott, uh, what have you guys been up to and what is your team name for the day? I'm doing just fine, I guess. I've been doing the same thing for four and a half months now and I'm kind of getting sick of it. Kind of like to go back to work, but, um, you know, we got this whole can't go work with people thing and I work with people. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. That, uh, that can be a problem. Uh, I don't necessarily have an Eric discontent type story, but I was supposed to be using my new microphone tonight. Uh, I had everything set up and ordered it so that I'd have it tonight and, uh, it's not here. Thank you, Amazon. So I have to go on a goose chase tomorrow around lovely Albany, New York, amidst shootings and riots and all sorts of fireworks and violence to get this microphone. So I want you guys to know that I'm very dedicated to this podcast and that lengths that I'm willing to go to. If you don't make it, we have a replacement lined up. So, I mean, yeah, no, not, a, not a replacement microphone or a replacement bench warmer. So, hey, Nicole, how you doing? You, uh, you, want, you want to become a bench warmer? <laughs> Do you have hats you can wear? <laughs> His hat collection is extensive. Yeah, just make sure whoever it is. Yeah. Ironically, you're not wearing a hat right now. I wear a lot of hats for this podcast, mm-hmm. and I don't mean the work that we do. All right, so what is your guys' team name tonight there, Dan and Scott? We're going to go with uh, Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park. Explanation? <laughs> for no reason whatsoever. Okay. You like board games? <laughs> I mean, if, if you haven't played Clue, you're missing out. There's your explanation. <laughs> there you go. All right. I like it. Okay, well then, uh, Eric and Nicole, uh, what is your guys' team name? So um, we 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 talked earlier, and we discussed that we're we are both Chicago White Sox fans. Um, so our team name is you know has to go White Sox related, and we went with Hakuna Mankata. What a wonderful phrase! <laughs> it means no wins. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Right. We were one and two leading into today's game. <laughs> That's a win. Yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> Coincidentally, the twins are two and one going into today's yeah. game. Yeah, how'd they get those two wins? Completely unrelated. Yeah. I think they play in a different league. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> they definitely played in a different league these last couple of games. That's for sure. <laughs> so nice to be able to talk about current sports on this podcast for once. Listen, exactly, right? I could pitch for the White Sox right now, okay? You do have a striking resemblance to Dallas Keiko, that's for sure. You look just like there you him. go. I get Bobby oh, Jenks okay. more than Dallas Keiko, but it's okay. <laughs> Bartolo <laughs> Colon more than Dallas Keiko. <laughs> okay. All right, now on to the rules. We will be starting off with the tailgate to warm up the teams. This will be followed by four quarters of play, each with a different trivia style. The styles of quarters one through three will change from show to show, and I will explain them as we go along. Like any good sporting event, we will have a halftime show after the second quarter with entertainment questions pertaining to sports. And in the fourth quarter, our teams will wager from the points they've accumulated 
to see who are today's clipboard captains to be honored like the true bench warmers they are. All right, let's get this game underway. It's time now for the tailgate, consisting of three warm-up questions worth 10 points each. Question one. In this day and age, we are used to prominent people having Twitter meltdowns. But in 2014, this man had quite an epic one expressing his regret and trying to apologize to his former teammate, Mark McGuire. Yeah, I think so. I guess we'll still go ahead and check that in. All right, Colonel Mustard and the candlestick with the candlestick park. <laughs> I got to shorten this up. Why don't we just call you the Colonel? How about that? Is that okay? <laughs> The trademark. Right, the colonels, the colonels of uh, Kentucky will be uh, <laughs> will be checking in. Uh, Hakuna, Kentucky, isn't it the Kentucky Colonels? Wasn't that the ABA team? Yeah, but Candlestick Parks in San Francisco. <laughs> okay, so the colonels of San Francisco <laughs> will be checking in. Uh, Hakuna Makata, Mankata, you guys can go ahead and talk it out. I'm gonna. This is a tongue tie. You guys, I'm I'm glad I didn't drink any beers before this episode. Holy cow! <laughs> okay, I. Yeah, as far as Twitter meltdowns circa 2014, the only one I could think of was only one I could think of is Jose Canseco. Feel a little dumb because I couldn't remember if he played straight. <laughs> yeah, they did a long time ago. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't. I'm not hip with Twitter, um, but so I don't know of any meltdowns other than you know. Uh, oh, he very much had. He very much had a Twitter meltdown. His Twitter account. I am very hip on the Twitter. I've basically lived on Twitter for the last 12 years. Jose Canseco's Twitter is a trip. <laughs> I'm trying to get more involved in it, so maybe that's, that's a good way to start. All right. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm good checking in with that if you are. I'm happy to check in with Jose Canseco. All right. Hakuna Mankata is checked in with Jose Canseco and uh, Colonel Mustard of San Francisco. What do you guys got? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we we had a similar train of thought. I I don't know it for a fact or anything like that, but he's crazy. Twitter's for crazy people. He played with McGuire. Checked in with Jose Canseco. All right, points all around. It is Jose Canseco. He expressed his regret, but then published a follow-up book to uh, his first book, Juiced, uh, just a couple of months later. So it's classic Jose Canseco, right? (laughs) Apologized for it and then turned around and did the exact same thing. All right, question two. In week seven of the 2007 NCAA Division I football season, this then Big East school, in only its second year playing Division I football, was ranked number two in the nation, only to lose the next three games in a row. Hint, Jason Pierre-Paul went to this school. You good with it? I'm good with it. All right, uh, Matt, we could check in. All right, Hakuna Mankata is checked in. Uh, Colonel Muster, you guys can go ahead and talk it out. Yeah, I think I think it's South Florida. I think so too. So I think I remember. Yeah, the 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 Bulls that. Uh, yeah, 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 the Bulls. Yeah. 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 All right, you guys are checked we'll, in. We'll check that in. Yeah, checked in with the University of South Florida Bulls. Hakuna Mankata, what do you guys got? So we're gonna. I typed the wrong letter, so I. I have UCF, but yeah, so we're going to check in with UCF. I know it's USF, but yeah. Okay, you guys are checked in with UCF, the University of Central Florida. Uh, The answer is the University of South Florida Bulls. The football program at South Florida started in 1997, moved from SCS to FBS in 2006, and has switched conference affiliations three times since 2004. And if you're interested, there is a KTO 2007 NCAA football uh, season breakdown out there on YouTube. The amount of number two ranked teams that lost in that season uh, the week after they became number two is quite shock- shocking. I think it's like nine of them all lost. It's pretty interesting. I've actually seen that video. It's it's incredible. It, it is pretty good work. Yeah, they did a great job. All right, moving on to question number three. In 1993, this professional sports league started a multi-year expansion into the United States with such teams as the Sacramento Gold Miners, the Las Vegas Posse, the Baltimore Stallions, and the Shreveport Pirates. I trust you on that. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, We're going to check in. All right. Hakuna Mankata has checked in. Colonel Mustard in the Candlestick Park. You guys can talk it out. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the uh, that's the Canadian Football League, the CFL. I, I'm pretty sure that the uh, Baltimore Stallions won the Grey Cup. Yeah, that one and Shreveport are the two that sounded most familiar to me, names wise. Yeah, I don't remember Las Vegas having a team, right. but uh, but the Baltimore Stallions though. That, that I'm I'm positive. All right, cool. Let's check it in. We'll we'll check in the CFL. All right, you guys are checked in with the Canadian Football League. Hakuna Mankata, what'd you guys got? Yeah, what what Daniel just said sounds a lot like what I had. Baltimore Stallions was really the one that hit me. Um, CFL, I do believe they did win the Grey Cup one year. I think they're still the only non-Canadian team to win the Grey Cup. We checked in with the CFL, the Canadian Football League. All right, well, you guys are stealing all my flavor text here. Yes, the answer is the Canadian Football League. In 1995, the Stallions became the only non-Canadian team to win the Grey Cup. Thank you, Nicole and Dan. Jeez. Uh, but by 1996, the CFL had returned to all to an all-Canadian team format. So, yeah, and the Las Vegas Sacramento, I think they uh, only were there for one season each. My favorite one was that Shreveport actually was a um, on I forget Ottawa team. So the team was in Ottawa, but the front office people had to stay. No, no, no. The team was in Shreveport, but the front office people had to stay in Ottawa. There's some sort of weird thing where like for two years, the team was disconnected, you know, physically. So it was kind of a goofy scenario. That's so weird. <laughs> that didn't work out though. All right. So after our tailgate session, we have a score of 30 points for Colonel Mustard in the Candlestick Park and 20 points for Hakuna Mankata. And we'll move on to our first quarter. And that will be the Dean's List. The Dean's List. For this quarter, there will be three lists containing 10 items where the teams will go back and forth, guessing the items on the list. If a team guesses incorrectly, the other team can attempt to finish out that list. Each team is allowed one mulligan to be used after an incorrect guess. Each item is worth 10 points. We'll start off with list number one. Uh, Nicole, this is just for you. In the history of Duke basketball, they've had a ton of great scorers. Name the top 10 career points scorers in Duke basketball history. And as with you guys as our guest, Hakuna Mankano will be starting us off. Uh, okay. Duke scorers. <laughs> Send me over some names and I'll tell you. All right. Um, so we're going to, our first answer, we're going to go with uh, JJ Reddick. J.J. Redick with uh, 2,769 points is number one on the list. Nice. Over to Colonel Mustard in the Candlestick Park, or with the Candlestick Park. Um, let's see here. Yeah, let's get, let's take, let's, let's, let's do that. Yeah, that way, you know, we've taken kind of a, an easy answer. We're going to check in with Christian Leitner. With 2,460 all-time points, everyone hates Christian Leitner is number three on the list all right go ahead with that nicole um jay williams so jason williams yeah okay with 2079 points all time jason williams is number nine on the list all right we'll uh we'll go with johnny dawkins with 2556 points johnny dawkins is number two on the list all right matt we're gonna go with uh danny ferry with 2,155 points, Danny Ferry is number six on the list. I like the last two that we both brought up. Yeah, I, I don't think either one matters. Here. Uh, Go with yours. We're going to check in with uh, Kyle Singler. With 2,392 points, Kyle Singler is number four on the list. Yeah, I don't think we need it. Yeah, okay. okay. So we're just going to go with the last name because neither of us uh, remember the first name. <laughs> Um, we're going to check in with Banks. With 2,079 points, Gene Banks is number eight on the list. That leaves one, two, three names left, left on the list. The positions are number five, 
number seven and number 10. All right. I'm going to, I threw out a name that I, I we hope it sticks. Um, uh, Mike Kaminsky. With 2,323 points, Mike, how do you say it? Kaminsky? Did I come close there? Is number five on the list. So that leaves number seven and number 10. I'm going to go with Shire. With 2,077 points, John Shire is number 10 on the list. Completely forgot him. Nice pull. Yeah, good pull. We only have one name left that we've discussed. I'm not convinced he's there, but we may as well try it, right? That's favorite, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) We'll go with Trajan Langdon. (laughs) Where was I? was from. He's from, he <laughs> He's from Alaska. <laughs> okay, with 1,974 points, Trajan Langdon, Langdon excuse me, is number 15 on the list. Would you guys like to use your mulligan? No. No. Okay. Well, then back, to, back over to Hakuna Mankata for the last one. So we can talk this out, and I have zero old guy names left. Um. <laughs> okay, I have I have one old guy name left, so we will go with the one old guy name left we have between the two of I us, and that's Jeff Mullins. Jeff Mullins? I believe his name is Jeff. There's a Mullins. I'll just look for a Mullins. There's no <laughs> Mullins in the top no. 17. That's never a good answer when he's like, what? <laughs> no. yeah, but to be good. fair he does that with correct answers too, so you never, like, i do i do yeah so <laughs> yeah 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 i can't it's he speaks the truth okay so do you guys want to use your mulligan oh definitely not <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> uh-uh. okay. well you got nine you know i i expected there to be you know, they, this is our, my formula is five are fair, fairly easy. The next three or four are tough. And there's one or two that's nearly impossible. But let's go through this list again here real quick. So number seven is the one you guys didn't get. And I'm going to screw this name up. It's Mark Alari. A-L-A-R-I. Alari. Yep. And he was the early mid eighties guy. Then you got the rest of them, but then let's go through the 17 here real quick. At 11, Jim uh, Spang- Spannerkel. Spanarkel from the 70s. Number 12 is Grayson Allen, everyone's favorite. Number 13 is Art Hyman from the 60s. 14 is Shane Battier. Isn't he from Alaska? No. no. <laughs> um, just kidding. <laughs> number 15, Trajan Lagan. We talked about that. Number 17, Sheldon Williams. And then number, I'm sorry, 16, Sheldon Williams. Number 17 is Scott's all time favorite. Say it, Scott. Grand Hill. There you go. Number 17. If this was the top 20 awesome. list, Dan. We would have done very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah we named a few of those names <laughs> yeah Grayson Allen's the one that surprised me I thought he would have been higher on that list oh that guy's but, such uh, a trip he's awesome ah! <laughs> oh nice one <laughs> he's got a rim shot somewhere Hakuna <laughs> 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 Makata with five in that one and uh, Candlestick guys over there with four and we'll move on to list number two so here we go just for you Nicole this number two is the top 10 Chicago White Sox all-time career home run leaders. And I'm sorry I wrote this before I knew that Eric was going to be your teammate. <laughs> hey, that's <laughs> that's okay. I'm sure Eric's going to be a lot better at this than I am. <laughs> and since we started, up, or, uh, started off with Hakuna Mankata with the first one last, we'll start off with Colonel Mustard and the Candlestick Park. The obvious one out of the way, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're gonna go with the uh, the big hurt, Frank Thomas. That's a reach. With 448 uh, White Sox career home runs, Frank Thomas is number one on the list. Where the White Sox people over there? Are yeah, seriously. Serious <laughs> thinking going on it's, here. It's they're just lining it's, up their whole list so they're ready to go. With it's home. strategy. I don't want to, you know, I want to go with the obvious ones first. I know that you have seen the. Uh, whatever the stat guide or whatever they have. So just use your memory banks to come back with the every single piece of information. <laughs> so uh, we're going to look at this on ba- baseball reference at least 17 times. So let's just, you know, all right. So we're going to go with, uh, I believe he's number two on the list. Uh, Paul Canerco. With 432 home runs, just 16 behind the big hurt. Paul Canerco is number two on the list. 
Uh, we did, I know we played with them forever, so we had to hit some home runs. Harold Baines. With 221 home runs, a significant drop off from number two, Harold Baines is number three on the list. Oh, okay. That is precipitous. Mm-hmm. White Sox have had a lot of home run hitters, but it seems like guys that only spend part of their career there. Nicole, I think you can pick any off that list I just sent you, and I think we'd be okay. Yeah, um, I think among the I think among those on the list, I yeah, let's go with the let's go with the obvious one among those and say Carlton Fisk. That works with two hundred and fourteen home runs. Carlton Fisk is number four on the list. Wasn't he? Did they call him Pudge? Also, I forget how many of the there's been all twenty five different catchers named Pudge, right? Oh, I don't think it was Pudge. It was something along those lines, though. Oh, come on. You know all these nicknames, Eric. What was his nickname? I'm not good with nicknames. That's you. That's you. Okay. Especially, you know, the older guys, I'm not good with those ones. All right, Dan. Uh, Looks like we're in agreement on that one. We are going to check in with Maglio Ordonez. With 187 home runs, Maglio Ordonez is number five on the list. And yes, Carlton Fisk's nickname was Pudge. For all the, for all those who cared, which is exactly me. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go with Jermaine Die. With 164 home runs, Jermaine Die is number eight on the list. We'll go with the one we have left, then, right? Yeah, I mean that number now, 184 is eight. Scare me a little bit, but 164. Right. Sorry, oh, if 164. I misunderstood, misspoke. Sorry. I think he's still high enough up. All right. Yeah, let's do it. We're going to check in with uh, Jose Abreu. With 179 home runs, Jose Abreu is number six on the list. That leaves number seven, eight, I'm sorry, seven, nine, and ten. Okay, we're going to go with uh, Robin Ventura. With 171 home runs, Robin Ventura is number seven on the list. We'll go with Carlos Lee. With 152 home runs, Carlos Lee is number 10. On the list. We just got the one left, right? Mm-hmm. Number nine. All right. That's uh that's Bill Melton. With one hundred and fifty four home runs, number nine on the list is Bill Melton. Congratulations. You folks ran the list. Thank you very much. That's awesome. I was worried about that. I know I had uh, two White Sox fans on there, but I thought it'd be a little too specific. But I when I looked at the list, there's a lot of names on here that are very well known. So I thought it's gettable, you know. I've watched Eric run lists mm-hmm. time and time again, and it never ceases to amaze me that he just locks in and knows the Pulls it's these just, names, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Just so some reference with 140 home runs, and we'll go down to 15 here. Number 11 is Ron Kittle. Number 12 is Jose Valentin. Number 13 is my favorite name of all time in baseball, Minnie Minosa. Number 14 is Jim Tomey, and number 15 is the third baseman that always killed the Twins, Joe Creedy. Really? I I always loved Joe Creedy. I, re- I mean, I remember watching him play in the minors. Like, I think it was... Um, See, I didn't go... I didn't, oh, I love I didn't him. go that far down the list. I was surprised. Like, I was toying with Carlos Quinton for a while, but I didn't remember his name popping I, up. But... I had that name in here in our chat. Yeah, I was like, Carlos Quinton probably had around 100? yeah. Albert, don't call me Joey Bell. Not many with the White Sox, but yeah. Yeah. Num- oh, Joe Creedy at 15 at 125. So 100 probably would have been in the top 20. But... Okay, I'll have to check that later. Yeah. But he did have my favorite White Sox nickname of all time. So, Which is? Hard, hard-hitting hard Carlos Quinton. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> kind of st- stole that from Mark Witten, though, right? There you go. Yep. <laughs> nope. <laughs> all right. Ran that one. Five for each, so 50 points apiece. We'll move us on to list number three. Again, Nicole, thinking of you. In the history of the Triple Crown, there have been only 13 winners of all three races. Name the last 10 Triple Crown winners. And we'll start off with Hakuna Mankata. Well, we'll start with an obvious one and say American Pharaoh. In 2015, American Pharaoh. Scott, this is one of those lists that I kind of know. Great. So, have at it. 
Okay, well then we'll um, we'll go back to um, the one that was before American Pharaoh, way before American Pharaoh affirmed. In 1978, affirmed. Number three on my list. Sorry, and I'll say American Pharaoh's number two on my list. Yeah, go with that, Eric. So um, everybody knows that I'm a huge horse racing nut based on nothing that I've ever said ever. Um, <laughs> so we're going to go with uh, Justified. Uh, number one list from 2018 is Justified. Justify, yes. not Justified. Yeah, it's not a Justin Timberlake album. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. A good one, too. I have, yeah. according to Wikipedia, it's Justified. Wikipedia no, is wrong. It's Justify. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> I'll trust you, the horse racing guru, over Wikipedia <laughs> any day. <laughs> I have lots of memories of screaming at all three of his triple crown races hoping anyone anyone vino rosso gronk somebody could run him down and nobody freaking did <laughs> it's a good thing that this this list is just the triple crown winners because if i had to go any deeper than that i think <laughs> i'd be in trouble but uh let's go with uh, seattle slew all right number four on the list from 1977 is seattle slew and um, then the last one before Seattle Slew was Secretariat. Number five on the list from 1973 is Secretariat. I like when I get to sit back and just listen. This is nice. Me too. <laughs> um, let's go with let's go with Citation from 1940, 1948. I apologize. Number six on the list is Citation. Um, assault. From 1946, number seven on the list is Assault. And you guys are just going right down the list here, huh? Made it too easy. I got to count it back. Um, Scott, you just want me to go or you want me to check in with you? Oh, no, I just want you to go. No need. You could put, you could put Doik the Clown in there. <laughs> <laughs> Doik yes. the Clown. Doik the Clown. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure then that it's going to end with War Admiral. All right, number 10 on the list in 1937 is War Admiral. I'm then going to go with Whirl Away. In 1941, number nine on the list is Whirl Away. All right, give me a second. <laughs> Two of the ones that jump out at me aren't going to be on the list because they were from before um, War Admiral. It'd be Omaha and Sir Barton. Um, this is the one... Before assault, um, hold on. Holding, please. Most of my uh, horse racing stuff. Oh, he's got it. Count oh. Fleet. Say, say, that, <laughs> say that again. Count Fleet. That's right. Number eight on the list from 1943 is Count Fleet. Impressive. You two just killed it. Good job. <laughs> Uh, number 11, as you said, is Omaha. Number 13 is Sir Barton. But, I mean, come on. Number 12 is my all-time favorite horse name, Gallant Fox. I mean, that's just a great horse name, right? And you know what else is cool about Gallant Fox? He's the only Triple Crown winner to sire a Triple Crown winner because he's Omaha's, Omaha's daddy. Omaha's dad, yep, exactly. That was in my flavor text for when I had the question about Omaha, but that that, that I was scolded for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always here for a question about Omaha. Omaha the horse, anyway. I don't know anything about Omaha the city, but Omaha How about the horse. Omaha the play go. call from Peyton oh, Manning. I was thinking Little League World Series. <laughs> or the uh, Counting Crows song. Oh, I'm here for that. <laughs> I think we're done with Omaha references now, though. Scott said the uh, Little League World Series. I, I think you meant the College World Series. College, yeah. College World yeah. Series, <laughs> World Series. Yeah. William, yeah. Mutual of Omaha. Yes, we just lost Williamsport. Uh, all the listeners in Williamsport, we apologize. For yeah. Scott's unfortunate <laughs> Sorry, errors. one listener from Williamsport. <laughs> <laughs> I have steaks delivered to my house, actually, from a place in Omaha. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, yep. Omaha Hold'em. Yeah. Omaha Hilo. All right. Uh, after the first quarter, the scores are 170 to 170. So uh, even game going on here so far. Hopefully that uh, more points will continue here on to our second quarter, which will be how low can you go? How low can you go? 
For this quarter, there will be four questions consisting of five clues, given one at a time. After each clue, both teams will decide if they want to check in with their guests by sending a chat to the host. If a correct answer is checked in after the first clue, the team will receive 50 points. After the second clue, 40. After the third clue, 30. And so on. All right, in quarter number two, question number one, clue number one, question is, who am I? Clue number one is, my father was a Polish judo champion and played some football. And both my mother and my sister were professional volleyball players in Warsaw. All right. Does anybody want clue number two or, or, or move on? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Clue number two. In my early career, I played at the lower level of Polish football, helping. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to butcher these names. Uh, Znik Pruliszkow to win promotion from the third to the second division. I apologize to all my wife's Polish family who is listening right now. And uh, you will be throwing things at me at our next holiday together. <laughs> I don't speak Polish. I know that that's surprising. Scott, I'm going to need another one. <laughs> Eric and Nicole. Okay, let's take another clue. All right, clue number three. The next year after I helped uh, Zenik Pruliskow win promotion from third to second division, I signed with a Polish top division team, Lech. In my first game as a substitute in the UEFA Cup qualifier against Azerbaijan, I scored the team's only goal, which confirmed my reputation as a prominent European striker. Nicole, I'm good checking in if you are. I'm good checking in. All right. Matt, we're checked in. And we are checked in. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, I and uh, both teams have checked in. Uh, we'll go on and uh, go to clue number four. In June of 2010, I signed a four-year contract with uh, Borussia Dortmund of the Bundesliga. There, I appeared in 131 games, striking 74 goals, and led Dortmund to two league championships and the league's top scorer. Clue number five, in 2014, I shook up the Bundesliga, signing with Dortmund's rival, Bayern Munich where I led Baron to the league title in each of my first fix six seasons, leading the league in scoring four of those years and twice being named the Bundesliga player of the season. I am Robert Lewandowski. Both teams checked in after the third clue, getting 30 points each with Robert Lewandowski. Good job, folks. Good to know your host. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, right there. <laughs> oh, geez, Scott, really? It's that bad? <laughs> wow never heard of that guy you've never heard of robert lewandowski he is actually a very if you know european soccer even a little bit he's one of the best players over there he's i mean when it comes to strikers he's probably the greatest striker in our generation i mean there's scorers over there with um with uh who are the two the venezuelan and the um who am i thinking of um come on guys help me out here ronaldo messi they're both good scorers those and guys. good players. They're both good scorers and good players, but when it comes to pure strikers, Robert Lewandowski is... Okay, never mind. I'll shut up. I'm not going to be able to convince you. I mean, yeah, you can't like make me know someone. <laughs> Either know him or I don't. Hey, uh, hey, Scott, do you know who Robert Lewandowski is? Yeah, he's a... Oh, he's well, there you go, <laughs> see? I just made you know him. <laughs> you learned a thing. <laughs> we'll retain that for about 10 more minutes. <laughs> All right, we will move on to question number two, only because I am not creative. Uh, you're going to notice a theme here. I have another, but who am I? I was the last active Montreal Expo before I retired. So meaning he just played with the team at some point. Nicole, I think we can check in. Wow. Okay. Holy cow. We're checked in as well. So, well, all right. Well, evidently, I don't really need to do much with this one here. I, that, that's, I, I assumed like the Seattle supersonic stuff, I, I assumed there was less, no, less known who the last expo was, but evidently not because both of you guys got it. So, um, I've looked at something on this recently. Yeah. That's, uh, 
that's why I had this. I knew he played for him, and I knew he's 105 years old and like played last year, <laughs> two two years ago. Matt, we need to uh, we need to like officially check these in with uh, with names though. We should. Well, well, let me go through the clues here first for the listeners, and then we'll do the check in with the names at the end. Yeah, you're right, Scott. I messed that up in the first one. So, clue number two: in his 21 year Major League Baseball career, he played for 12 different clubs. Number three: he was a four time All Star and won the Cy Young Award once. Clue number four, in 2002, he was traded by the Indians to the Expos for Grady Sizemore, Brandon Phillips, and Cliff Lee. That's called getting a return on your right? trade right there. Sizemore, Brandon Phillips, and Cliff Lee. That's, oh, they rate. Clue number five, uh, with the Mets on May 7th of 2016, this big sexy hit his first major league home run against the Padres at Petco Park. Hakuna Mankata, what was your answer? We checked in with Bartolo Colon. And Colonel Musser with the candlestick park, your answer? Former Minnesota twin, Bartolo Colon. <laughs> that is right. Big Sexy himself, Bartolo Colon. I have my twin's Big Sexy jersey upstairs in the closet. So, All right, 50 points for each team on that one. Anecdote there, Matt. I uh, I was going to, like, during checking in, I was going to mention he was traded for uh, – Mr. Grady Sizemore that won me a previous game, but your clue took it from me, so thank you. Yeah, sorry. No, it's fine. I mean, we, we both sent each other the same name. <laughs> After the first question, we're like, we got to check well, this I was in. sitting there. I know that, uh, you know, we've on this show, we've had at least three references, at le- or maybe two, to uh, Supersonics, former players that I know of, right? And so I thought, well, what is the last, you know, Major League Baseball team that we could kind of have a similar question? And that's how I came upon this. And I didn't think it was like ubiquitous that people would know that Bartolo Colon was I mean, the bat. It was just Expo. a super prominent trade when he went to the Expo. That's why yeah. I can remember it. But he only played half a season with the Expos. Yep. He left after that half season. All right. Question number three What am I? Clue number one. This university's football program started in 1890 and changed its name three times in the first 10 years. Its first nickname was the Old Gold Knights. Let's take one more, Scott. And Eric and Nicole. I have a, um, an idea, Nicole, but if you want to take one more, we can. I mean, it's about... It depends on how confident you are. If you're if you're confident, I am happy to roll with your confidence since your inklings have tended to be very, very good. I will tell you right now, it's a confident guest. <laughs> that's all that is. It's not based on really much other than I believe I heard it before. And that's, but let's okay. take one more. I don't want to say too much. All right. Question number three, clue number two. Its volleyball program has won five national championships since 1995, along with 34 conference championships since 1976. We're checked in. All right. Colonel Musser with the Candlestick Park is checked in after clue number two. That means that uh, Hakuna Mankata, you guys can go ahead and talk it out. So I'm, I'm using my, my game theory here. Um, and I know Matt has mentioned his wife has went to Nebraska a few times. And I'm pretty sure I heard that that was the old Golden Knights. Because I, being an, a Penn State fan, I hear a lot of Big Ten talk from all the other Big Ten schools. And I, I swear I swear that's, that's come up before. Um, so if, if, unless you have something yeah, I, I, I don't I don't have anything better. And I don't have any, I, I don't have anything to go against you thinking you've heard that. And if you're, if you're, if you're happy to check in and want to game theory it, I'm fine. I just, I, the fact that they checked in makes me want to check in. So that's, okay. I don't want to, I don't want to let it go. <laughs> then let's um, do it. <laughs> so, so Matt, we're going to check in with Nebraska. Okay, Hakuna Mankata has checked in with Nebraska. Uh, Colonel Musser with the Candlestick Park, you guys might as well check in also with your answer since you already checked in. See, I, I had heard this before on your first clue, but I couldn't quite place it. Um, knowing it was the volleyball um, connection is what did it for me, and that's Nebraska. All right, well, we'll go ahead and do the rest of the clues here. Uh, clue number three. Since 1995, the primary athletic conference 
it competes in has changed three times. Clue number four, its baseball program has never been dominant, but has produced some significant major league talents such as Alex Gordon and Darren Erstead. And clue number five, its football program has won five national championships and is currently head coached uh, with its starting quarterback from its last championship in 1997. The answer is the University of Nebraska. Clue number and, six, it's right down the road from Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. That's called a callback, people. There you go. <laughs> we said we were done with Omaha. We lied. <laughs> yeah, we're not done. Uh, just FYI, uh, the Husker bowling team has won 10 national championships <laughs> since 1991. And so you're uh, aware here, uh, the old gold Knights may have been uh, its first nickname, but its second nickname, its third nickname is the Huskers. The second nickname, does anyone know that? It's very familiar when you say it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, oh, yeah, that was it. It's my all-time favorite nickname for any team ever. The bug eaters. <laughs> yep, that's it. Yep, that was it. <laughs> Seriously, uh, there. If, if you go to many Nebraska like uh, paraphernalia uh, stores, they'll have bug eater shirts there. So, well, my first grade girlfriend, the same thing. <laughs> A bug eater. Was that like in the first grade? <laughs> yeah. To really call this back <laughs> on the chat to Scott when I was trying to figure out what this was. I said, it's something in middle America. And that goes right <laughs> back to uh, Omaha by the Counting Crows. <laughs> are, are you saying that gets to the heart of matters? And long was hard and then it fell Oh, in my there. God. But, um, oh, geez. Okay. Let's move on here before we get too crazy. We'll move on to question number four. I, I uh, deviated from the theme here for a minute with number three, but number four, I'm right back at it. Who am I? Clue number one. In September of 1986, I made my Major League debut, starting a 20-year Major League Baseball career. Matt, I think we need to take another one. All right. I was, I'm waiting for them to take another one because I get nervous when they're taking so long. So we'll take another one, too. Yeah, I'm good at that. that. All right. We're on to clue number two. At the start of my career, I was known as a prolific hitter and a defensive liability. I quickly turned that around and became the premier defensive player at my position for a generation. We'll check in. Oh, checking in, huh? No, I, I think we need one more. All right. Well, we'll move on to yeah. clue number three. I was the 1987 NL Rookie of the Year, a five-time All-Star, a six-time Gold Glove winner, and a four-time Silver Slugger. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Oh, they're checked in, yeah. Yeah, it's not Paul Merrow, obviously. You don't think it's Palmero? They played in the AL. He started with Texas. Okay, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. Could this be, when did Jeff Bagwell come up? Um, Because this could be, this is definitely his range. It is. The accolades sound right. And 05 is when they went to the World Series and lost to the White Sox. Just throwing that out there for you guys. Um, and then I believe he retired right after that. Now I'm not at all. I, I don't think so. I, I when did he come up? Um, I thought it was a little bit later than '87. Yeah, so did I. I, I want to say he was like '89 or something That's like that. Kind of what I'm thinking too, right? Yeah, him in like the same time as like uh, Griffey. Maybe even later. Maybe even in the '90s for him. I know rookie of the year in '87. No, he um he was the rookie of the year the same year that um. Chuck Knobloch was, 91. Okay. So it's it's not him. All right. I guess we got to take another one. I, I hate this, but. Yeah, there's just too many. What, when did, uh, I don't think he would fit. I was going to say, when did Tony Gwynn come up and retire? Oh, he came up way earlier. He came up before that, right? Yeah, way like early. 84? Yeah, 83, 84, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I guess we should probably take another clue. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to clue number four. In my 20 years in Major League Baseball, I played for 10 different clubs, but I'm known primarily for being a Padre. All but one of those years was in the NL, and in 2002, I was a member of the Giants, and I was the NLCS MVP. It's going to be Benito Santiago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we can check that in. I, I feel good about that. Yep. 
All right. So Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick uh, Park is checking in with Benito Santiago after the fourth uh, clue. And uh, Hakuna Mankata, what did you guys uh, check in with? So we got a little too fancy for our own good. Um, we thought you were misleading us on purpose with the, uh, the the batting stats and stuff. But So we uh, checked in with Greg Maddox. All right. One team getting points there. Uh, the clue number five, even though I only played there for six seasons, I'm a member of the San Diego Padres Hall of Fame. And most catchers today have uh, emulated my catching style, kicking their leg out to get more leverage and throwing out runners from their knees. The answer is Benito Santiago. And did you know, uh, for a few years there in the early 90s, Benny Santiago was the uh, war number 09, not just 9, 09. He was the last Major League Baseball player and the last big four major sports player to be known to have played of the jersey at the leading zero. So just, you know, FYI. And FYI, uh, Benito Santiago was my all-time favorite player as a kid. Well, not all-time, but close to it. So Dave Winfield, number one. Are you a All closet right. Padres fan? You know, uh, they were always my NL team as a kid growing up was the Padres too. So, but I was a Jose Lima fan also. So I liked the Pirates just a little bit too. So, uh, in that quarter, then uh, Hakuna Makata had 120 points for a total of 290 points in the game so far. And Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park had 140 points for a total of 310. It's now time for the halftime show. Today's halftime show is going to be a little bit different than our normal uh, format. I'll give you the name of an artist and one of their songs that references an athlete. For those songs that have just one reference, it's worth 20 points. For the songs that have multiple references, it's worth five points per answer capped at four answers max. Does that make sense? If there's a song that only has one athlete in it, you get 20 points if you get it right. If there's a song that has multiple athletes in it, you only get five points per uh, per athlete. Yep. All right. The first one better be Eminem. Dirty Rotten Rhymer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to start with question number one. The artist is Billy Joel. And the song is We Didn't Start the Fire. And this song has three, four, five, six, seven athletes referenced in it. Jeez. It, yeah. I think so it's how fair. many do we need? Four? You only need four. Maximum of four. All right, Scott. Warm up those pipes. Let me hear it. So, oh, some Joel. I only do 80s. So. <laughs> <laughs> Adelina Wine Mixer, baby. That's right. <laughs> Sing up, town girl. <laughs> so, I think we've got four. Yep. Let me write them down. We've got five, actually. But... Yeah. We'll, we'll check that in then. All right. Then, Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park is checked in. Hakuna Makata, you guys can chat it out yeah embarrassing embarrassing confession to make as someone who plays a lot of pub trivia i don't actually know the words who he didn't start the fire i mean there's a lot of them so it's it's understandable yeah that's fair like i think there's a point i think there's a point at which joe dimaggio is mentioned in it although who knows that might just be no that's right Joe DiMaggio is mentioned in every song. <laughs> no, he's in the B. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly yeah. going through the song. I'm just trying. It's all the verses are so similar. And I'm, and it's, 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 it hurts my dyslexia because I go from one verse and then I start singing the next one and it turns right back into the last one I just did. Yeah. Vince DiMaggio. Yeah. I was just gonna ask Dan, why don't these songs ever reference Vince DiMaggio? It's always joking all the limelight. Uh, we didn't start the fire is one of the lyrics nicole just as an fyi <laughs> it was always burning since the world <laughs> okay fine the verses are soup i know the chorus thank you though thank you <laughs> so i think we have three yeah i mean i'm just thinking of like major you know ma major athletes through the 
middle of the 20th did, century. Did like... Chubby Checker play baseball? <laughs> I, I I think the closest thing he did to a sport was the oh, twist. That's close. <laughs> there you go. That's close. <laughs> I mean, the, the twist is a... The, the twist is athletic. I have probably fallen over at least once while attempting to do the twist. That makes it a sport. <laughs> Actually, that probably just makes me a klutz. But... Yeah, both can be true, right? <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Everyone in my bowling league knows that. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want to check in then with your three or do you want to? No, I feel like I can get one more if I take an hour. Um, well, by all means, do that. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to work tomorrow. tomorrow. I know. That's why we we got all night, babe. <laughs> was Jackie Robinson called out? Was uh, Yogi Berra, Ted Williams? Why do I keep thinking of baseball? Players? Well, Mickey Man, Joe DiMaggio, all... Mickey Mantle are mentioned. So there's two. Sugar Ray is mentioned. That's three. Yeah. Um, like Mark McGrath. I just want to fly high. Like a bird in the sky. Huh? <laughs> Put your arms around me, baby. <laughs> that song was so bad. I know that song better than I know he didn't start the fire. <laughs> you know, he calls out his mom being dead in that song and she wasn't this is my mother god rest her soul she wasn't dead we will never understand mark mcgrath he is one of the great mysteries of the universe well one of the mysteries of the universe for sure <laughs> the 90 uh, percent of the reason i wrote this uh half time is to get people to sing so all i'm saying is we better not lose mark mcgrath after this yeah. Oh, wait, wait, we're falling right into Eric's trap. We're singing. He's gonna come up with something now. Yeah, exactly. Look at him. <laughs> John Tesh, we got it. <laughs> All I'm saying is Sugar Ray's a lot of fun at karaoke. Singing Sugar Ray or actually having mm. Sugar Ray at karaoke? I would imagine both, honestly. I've never shared the karaoke stage with Mark McGrath. I've never had that pleasure. He sounds fun. He seems like a fun guy. And he's, I feel like he wears tank tops year round. He's like that kind of guy. <laughs> All right, let's just go with three. Yeah, I, get, yeah. I, I, I can't get anyone else either. So check in with Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle, and Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray. And for the fourth one, just a shot in the dark, California baseball. <laughs> okay. Well, there is no there is no player named California baseball. <laughs> Damn it. But yes, you did get three of them right. <laughs> Brooklyn has a winning team too. Is also oh, nice. there it is. A winning team. I say that about eighteen yeah. times over this last ten minutes. <laughs> Colonel Mustard in the Candlestick Park. What uh, What do you have? All right, we have Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle, and then one of the lines in there is Liston beats Patterson. So I guess it's Sonny Liston and Floyd Patterson. I'm pretty sure Roy Campanella's in there, but we're not locking in with we're not checking in with him. And does Fidel Castro count? <laughs> no, he, he did played not minor count. league baseball. I took him out, but yeah, he, he is in there. I I actually did debate that whether or not he should count or not. Uh, you are correct. You got 40 points there. Uh, Joe DiMaggio, Sugar Ray, Rocky Marciano, Liberace. Oh. Goodbye. Uh, Roy Campanella, Mickey Mantle, Sonny Liston, Floyd Patterson. So those are the, what did I say? Seven. Yep. Seven references. And Billy Joe's We Didn't Start the Fire. So one team getting 20 points, another team getting 15. We'll move on to question number two. Only one athlete referenced in this song. And uh, I don't know if I should give another hint. How about this? I'll read it and then you can tell me if you need another hint. The artist is the Fugees. The song is Ready or Not. Does anybody, do we need a hint? I had this album. I might be able to come up with it. Of the song. Singing it. Yeah. Head. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say no to an extra clue, though. I mean. Yeah, neither am I. <laughs> Eric? Eric has a look on his face like he's determined to figure this out. Dang it. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a hint. And I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> the hint is... From the song, The Fuji's Ready or Not, the athlete referenced is the very last thing spoken in the song. Nicole, we can check in. 
Okay. All right. Uh, Hakuna Mankata is checked in. Colonel Mustard and the Candlestick Park, you guys can talk it out. Yeah, I, I think it's um, something from Guantanamo Bay. Dance, uh, dance around the like, like Cassius Cassius Clay. Clay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right, Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park is checked in with uh, Cassius Clay. Hakuna Mankata, what did you guys uh, come so, up with? So, um, quote from one of my favorite all-time movies, um, his mama name him Clay, I'm going to call him Clay. Cassius Clay. And the answer is Cassius Clay. I figured we have enough talking in this one, so I didn't put any flavor text with that. So we'll just move on to question number three, what I hope is going to be an easy one for everyone. The artist is the beastie boys and the song is sure shot oh, oh and i should say I, I apologize only one athlete referenced in this song trying to remember the song eric will sing it for you if you want <laughs> i'm trying to remember what album it was on 100 percent, nicole then check that one in <laughs> all right we're checked in all right hunkuna mankata is checked in colonel mustard in the candlestick park you can talk it out I'm just going to hope that he can pull it here because I it's help with the Beastie Boys. It's, I think it's on Ill Communication, which is one I don't know as well. <sighs> um, not certain I'm going to get this one, Scott. Yeah, and I'm of no assistance whatsoever. Uh, I, don't, I don't listen to the Beastie Boys. I mean, I, I like them. I like the Beastie Boys, but there's a lot of lyrics in there. Sure. I mean, we can maybe try to throw out an educated guess. Yeah. I mean, thinking of that time, Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> uh, nothing's coming to mind, Scott. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I mean, throw something out. I guess I'm. Uh, this is probably early '90s. Um, yeah, either that or really late '80s. Right, Joe Montana. Joe Montana. Sure, why not? Yeah. All right, uh, so. Colonel Mustard in the Candlestick Park is checking in with Joe Montana. And before Hakuna Mankata, you guys check in. I want to sing it, if you don't mind, since you already told me your answer via chat. Why are we chatting answers to the host? Because yes. I wanted to sing it. I specifically <laughs> said I wanted to text it, message it to me because I want to sing it before he says it. Because it's going to kill Dan. Uh, you pull up the function and you know I Kojak. To all the party people are on my Bozak. I've got mad hits. No, I, I got more action than my man John Moo, and I've got mad hits like I was Rod Carew. <laughs> I'm not feeling bad about that. I wasn't coming up with what? that. Oh, okay. All right, so then uh, who couldn't Maracata, what did you guys have for an answer? We checked in with Rod Carew. Mm-hmm. And I verified that with chat. So I know him from the Hanukkah song. Yes. <laughs> I hope that's one of the questions. I did not I know, go right? with that one. No, there's a lot of references there. So, <laughs> Yeah. He converted. Again, uh, question number four. Uh, the artist is Beyonce. And the song title is Crazy in Love. And just one athlete referenced in this song also. And I know this. All right. Good. Check in. Colonel Mustard with a Candlestick Park is checked in. Akuna Makata, you can talk it out. This one's going to hurt. Um, this is not a song I know. My knowledge of music tails off after about the early aughts, unfortunately. And yeah. Got me looking you so deep in your eyes. I touch on you more and more every time. <laughs> When I leave, you're no, begging me not to go. Stop. Call your name two or three Stop times it. in a row. <laughs> He's gonna get it, Scott. That's all you get. <laughs> I need one more verse. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after. Hang out here all night. You can drink a few more beers and sing another verse or two. Mm, sure. Yeah. I've got not? sparkling water, so it's not quite getting me there. Darn. <laughs> Oh my God! I, thank you, thank you so much, Scott. Thank you. You're oh, welcome, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> you would have got it. Uh, all right, we can check in. Okay. Um, all right, Hakuna Mankata, you checked in. What do you have for an answer? Uh, Nick Van Exel and, uh, and Colonel Mustard at the Candlestick Park. Yeah, it could be a deceiving question because Beyonce doesn't say it at all. It's during Jay Z's 
rappers. It's uh, Toke the Rock like Van Axel. Yep, that is right. The answer is Nick Van Axel. Thanks for the flavor there, Scott. I didn't add that to it. So I don't know. I just knew that Nick Van Axel was in it. So, And question number five is Jay-Z and Alicia, K- Alicia Keys with uh, Empire State of Mind. How many athletes? Two athletes reference. We can check in. Nice. I think I would have gotten there, but I'm I'm glad you're on it. Yep. All right, Colonel Mustard in the Candlestick Park. Nicole, we can check in. Okay. okay. Both teams are checked in. Hakuna Makata, why don't you go ahead and tell me your answer first? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. And Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park. Especially, I got it made. If Jesus is paying LeBron, I'm paying Dwayne Wade. There you go. Yep. The answer is Dwayne Wade and LeBron James. Uh, good job, folks. Pretty solid round there. Only a couple of minor slip-ups. I wouldn't call not knowing that uh, Rod Carew was in that song a <laughs> slip-up. <laughs> what, do you think that you should have known it? Or you, do or you think that, that it was too obscure? No, no. I mean, it obviously wasn't too obscure because they got it. So, I mean, I just it's just one of their songs that I just don't know very well. So, yeah, I'll remember it now. So heading into the second half, uh, we have a score of Hakuna Makata with 385 points and Colonel Mustard with a candlestick park with 390 points. Uh, Nail biter here, folks. Five points difference. That's all we got. We'd like to take a minute to invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at BenchwarmersTP. We also have a Facebook group for fans of the pod called The Bench. Join us there to comment on the latest episodes and share cool sports facts and trivia. If you'd be willing to rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher, we'd greatly appreciate the support so that other people may find this podcast. Thanks. Now we're going to move on to our second half. Today's third quarter will be The Missing Link. The Missing Link. This quarter will consist of five questions with theme-linked answers. The teams will attempt to answer the questions and guess the theme. Each question is worth 20 points. If a team checks in first via chat to the host with the correct theme before the fifth question, they will earn 100 points. The other team can still earn 50 points with the correct theme guess. If neither team has checked in with the correct theme before the fifth question, each team can earn 50 points with the correct answer to the theme after the fifth question. Question number one. This son of a former NBA coach is the current owner of an NBA G League team and a general manager with a NBA franchise. Yeah, this seems like it should be in your wheelhouse there, Scott. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It should be. It's bothering me that I like haven't checked in already. And Elton Brand is the 76ers GM. I've heard of that. Matt, we're going to check in. Okay. Hunkuna Mankata has checked in. Colonel Muster with the Candlestick Park. Go ahead and talk it out. Dan, the only name that comes to mind, because I know he did some coaching as well, is Ryan Saunders, Flip Saunders' son. Yeah, he's currently the coach, though, isn't he? Is he? I'm, I, I've kind of – it's kind of hard to stay on top of that. I think he's currently the coach, though. Let's. I mean, let's just go back through old coaches. Yeah, so we got to think how old, right? Like, I, I don't think – I'm, I'm thinking 80s. Okay, so like Chuck Daly? Yeah. Pat Riley? Yeah, like Pat Riley um, and um, – I mean, like Phil Jackson era. Jerry um, Sloan. Jerry Sloan. Lenny Wilkins. Um, uh, what was his name? Um, for the Texans, not Texans, for the uh, Mavericks. Uh, Don, Don, Don Nelson. Nelson. Could be. Uh, his, his Casey Jones. Paul, Paul Westfall. <laughs> None of those are really, I mean, nothing is percolating from that. Didn't Don Nelson's son coach on the same staff as him? I thought so. When you said that, something stood out about his son. I don't couldn't really remember what it was. I don't even remember his name. But we can just go Nelson, right? I mean, if that's if that's what it is. I mean, 
Yeah, that, no, that gives us a lot of options. It gives us Jameer Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why that one's jumping out at me, that he coached on the same staff as his father. I remember his I, – I do remember him having, like, a prominent son in basketball. I don't know if we're going to come up with anything better than that. All right, should we just check, check in Nelson then? Yep, let's do it. Not the band, Nelson. Matthew <laughs> <laughs> and Gunner. That's no not Hanson. Hanson. Dude, that's Hanson. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, this, this, is a, this is a hair band. <laughs> oh, awesome. Like Ozzy and Harriet's kids or grandkids or something. <laughs> that's, uh, Nelson is, I can't live without your love. <laughs> Nothing, Matt. <laughs> so what <laughs> I've lost caring about Nelson. <laughs> I prefer extreme actually over I just, Nelson. I, so yeah, okay. I do too. Yeah. I was just going to <laughs> Okay, so Colonel Mustard in the Candlestick Park is checking in with the ambiguous Nelson. Um Hakuna Mankata, what did you uh what did you have? So um this is where we do the the beeping, right? The backing up. Beep. <laughs> That's uh, only yeah, if we got it. It's it's Don Nelson's son, Donnie Nelson. <laughs> that is correct. The answer is Donnie Nelson. <laughs> All right, fine. Add the beeping. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. I don't even know if we backed into it so much as we just came up with a name <laughs> that could fit. So Donnie got his start in the NBA as a regional scout with the Bucks when his dad was the coach of the team in 1982. He's been all around the NBA and currently is the Mavs general manager. Okay, so our theme-linked answer so far is Donnie Nelson. All right, question number two. This man was a two-time unanimous first-team All-American, holds the NCAA Division I FBS record for the most amount of 200-yard 200 rush, 200 rushing games at 12, and the NCAA Division I FBS record for the most rushing yards through his freshman, sophomore, and junior year. You just made the mistake of allowing someone on your show who is a lot better at remembering horses than they are at remembering people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I don't have any numbers for rushing yardages for horses. So <laughs> we're gonna check in, Matt. Okay, Scott. Uh, it would be in furlongs, though. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's true. Uh, it Colonel, would be in furlongs. <laughs> Colonel Mustard and the Candlestick Park are checked in. Hakuna Makata, you can talk it out. So, Nicole and I talked this over extensively. Mm -hmm. um, I could tell you saw it. I was vigorously typing. But I think I got to it. Um, I know you've mentioned him before previously. You know, 50% guess. I want to say Jonathan Taylor. So we're going to check in with that. Hakuna Makata has checked in with Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Colonel Muster at the Candlestick Park. What do you have? We're going with the maxim of this game of know your host. And we also checked in with Jonathan Taylor. That is right. Uh, the Colts' new product himself is Jonathan Taylor. And all if he would have stayed one more year, he would almost certainly broke the record for the most amount of rushing yards for a career. But, you know, can't blame the fellow for wanting to get his money in the NFL. And all those records, no Heisman Trophy. So our theme-linked answers so far are Donnie Nelson and Jonathan Taylor. Question number three. Hold off on question number three for a second, please. Currently holding off on question number three. <laughs> Let's do it. Crap. <laughs> really? Donnie Nelson and Jonathan Taylor? Oh, these guys. They grew up together in different age groups. Different social backgrounds. For different areas, different... Oh. They've both sung karaoke on stage with Mark McGrath. There it is. <laughs> Might be true. <laughs> All right. Question number three. This active Canadian born first baseman has a 307 lifetime average, bats left but throws right, and is a six time All Star and has won the NL MVP once. We can check in. 
All right, Colonel Muster with the Candlestick Park is checked in. Akuna Makata, you can go ahead and talk it out. This is exciting. <laughs> um, how many MVPs can I name? Matt, you said a first baseman? Yes. Mm-hmm. Bats left, throws right, Canadian-born, active. I'm not great with NL teams, so this is going to be tough. I'm spacing on all of them right now. I'm trying to figure out how they're connected to Donnie Nelson. <laughs> and Jonathan <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> what about Joey Votto? That sounds Canadian. A. <laughs> Ryan Howard? I don't know if either of them are Canadian. Um, he's, he's not active, so that yeah, kind of cuts that. not active. Okay. Part. Crashed and burned. Um, Joey Votto's active, though, right? Um, I think so. <laughs> Oh God! This game is. Like... Let's go. With, let's 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 go with uh with Joey Votto. All right, Hakuna Mankata has checked in with Joey Votto. Colonel Mustard in the Candlestick Park. What are you checked in with? I, I wanted to answer before you finish the question, but I didn't want to be that guy. I got <laughs> that once, so I don't like when I get scolded on the podcast. Uh, yeah, it's it's Joey Votto. That's right. The answer is Joey Votto. So Joey's father was a chef but he passed away in 2008 and his mother is a restaurant manager and currently a sommelier. The uh, theme linked answers thus far are Donnie Nelson, Jonathan Taylor, and Joey Vato. All right, we'll move on to question number four. This Jayhawk who led his team to a 1988 NCAA title spent 14 years in the NBA and is now the head coach of an ACC school's basketball program. We'll check that in. All right. We got candles. Uh, Colonel Mustard in the Candlestick Park is checked in. Akuna Makata, talk it out. Yeah, in 1988, the only person I was watching on TV who was tall enough to play basketball wasn't actually a person. It was just Big Bird. <laughs> <laughs> that's larry's brother so i mean it's pretty close yeah so yeah speak reverently <laughs> i'm gonna put them in the nba through the 90s but i'm trying to remember someone from the nba in the 90s who was a went to kansas 88 kansas was i want to say that was danny manning's team um want to go with danny manning then I think he's a coach somewhere. Yeah, I, I um, don't remember where, but as soon as you said that, it sounded right that he's done some coaching. So, yeah, let's go with Danny Manning. All right, Hakuna Mankata. <laughs> Hakuna Mankata is checking in with Danny Manning. Uh, Colonel Musto at the Candlestick Park. Current head coach on Tobacco Road. He's at Wake Forest, Danny Manning. That's right. The answer is Danny Manning. Danny's dad, Ed, was also a longtime NBA, ABA player and later was a professional and college level coach. So all Danny needs to do is coach in the NBA and take after dear old dad. Arguably the greatest college basketball season of all time that he had. I mean, he went number one in the draft. He won player of the year. He won a national title. Can't argue with any of that information. Thanks, Scott. Sure. The theme linked answer thus far are Donnie Nelson. Jonathan Taylor, Joey Vato, and Danny Manning. Nicole, I think that might be it. Yeah, because you, you sent me the first names, Danny, Joey, Donnie, and Jonathan. And <laughs> I think those are four of the five new kids on the block. <laughs> Let's go with it. I, I, I... I mean, they had a bunch of hits. I got Chinese food the other day, so. Did it make you sick? It did. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry. <laughs> But you're hanging tough in there right now, right? Uh, <laughs> you, are, yeah. you know, I came home, I, I got the right stuff, and now I'm doing well. <laughs> step by step, baby. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's check in with new kids on the yeah. block. <laughs> All right. I uh, hope to God that's it. If it's not, it's going to be. <laughs> oh, my God, I checked in with new kids on the block after the fourth clue. Uh, I mean, I don't know, uh, Colonel Mustard at the Candlestick Park. Do you, do you want to check? Do you want to tell them what your answer was? Now we can wait till after question five. Okay, <laughs> we'll go on to question number five. This former Vanderbilt quarterback, 
who had a cup of coffee in the NFL with three different teams and spent one year in the CFL may be better known for being on The Bachelorette and feuding with his NFL brother. We can, uh, we can check that in. Yep. Colonel Muster with the Candlestick Park is checked in. Hakuna Mankata, talk it out. Not the direction I thought it was going, but that's all right. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't that Jordan Palmer? And that would make sense because Jordan's the other new kid. <laughs> did, but did Jordan, Jordan Palmer went to Vanderbilt? I don't know where Jordan Palmer went. <laughs> I, <laughs> I also, I, the only season, and the only season of The Bachelor I, I know was the season that Bobby Gwynney was on because I listened to Fat Amy back in the 90s and Bobby Gwynney was the lead singer. That's the only Bachelor season I watched. <laughs> he wasn't on it though? No, this was only one season. This was a season back in like 2003. All right. <laughs> It makes sense, but I don't think he went to Vanderbilt. That's why I'm... Uh, now you're... I don't know. Whatever. I Yeah, we'll check in. Yeah, I don't have anything else. Akuna Makata has checked in with Jordan Palmer, Colonel Muster with a Candlestick Park. What is your answer? So, Matt, mm-hmm. Jesse Palmer was on The Bachelor. Mm, yeah, okay. Jordan Palmer went to UTEP. Okay. Technically, the answer, and your the answer is? is Jesse. So, I don't know if there's a Jesse and new kids on the block, but... We just, I know where we went wrong now. What's your answer to the question? We we said we said Jesse Palmer. I now know not just no, we, we said, said Jordan, Jordan Palmer. Palmer. And now I know where we went wrong because we didn't know our host. I I I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Jordan, Jordan freaking Palmer. Rogers. Yep. We are oh. Jordan Palmer, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. The answer is Jordan Rogers. Oh. We've been living by the mantra, know your host this entire game. And then we went and, and we didn't know him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For one question. We were thinking I was we we were trying to figure out which Jordan you were gonna do. From like question <laughs> two. We're in here, we're yeah, like, all right, what Jordan's it gonna Jordan, be? Jordan Spaith, Jordan Stahl. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have it on my list here like i had each name written out and then i googled prominent athletes with the first name surprisingly the toughest one was dan was uh donnie oh yeah there's not a lot of athletes who have donnie as a first name there's a lot of dons but nothing that's specifically known as donnie we were so, wondering if danny tartable was going to come back <laughs> yeah, we were, yeah. that was a good one should have done danny tartable Okay, so um, the uh, Hakuna Makata checked in with their theme link answer after the fourth, and they said uh, all first names of all members of New Kids on the Block. And Colonel Muster with the Candlestick Park, you checked in after the uh, second uh, question, and your answer was? It also said the New Kids on the Block, my wife's like all-time favorite uh, group. <laughs> And I, this is a true story. I wrote a game for next week, today, and I was really close to writing this exact theme <laughs> and thought better of it. And uh, well, there you go. Now I don't have to redo it. After the third quarter, our scores are Hakuna Mankata with 515 points and Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park. 570 points that brings us to the fourth quarter known as put your fours up the fourth quarter known as put your fours up this quarter consists of five categorized questions that teams will wager up to 100 points each not to exceed their current point total The theme for today's fourth quarter is You spin me right round, baby, right round Like a record, baby, right round, round, round The five categories for today are Question one, Olympic record Question two, NBA record Question three, tennis record Question four, NFL record And question five, NHL record all right, now that the wages are in, we are on to the questions in quarter number four. Question number one under Olympic record. 
1968 Summer Olympics were in the heightened elevation of Mexico City. At those games, the Olympic record for the long jump was set at 29 feet, two and a half inches. The closest anyone has come in Olympic competition since then was 27 feet. What American set that record in 1968? We'll check in. All right. Colonel Mustard with a candlestick park is checked in. Hakuna Mankata, you can talk it out. I'm pretty sure. Don't know the first name. Last name starts with a B. Hold on. Not sing, Scott. Do not sing. <laughs> it's uh oh <laughs> crap. Beeman. It's Beeman. Beeman. Bob, and I think his first name is Bob. We can just lock into Beeman, but I think it's Bob Beeman. No, I trust you. We're going with Bob Beeman. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be safe. Let's just check in with Beeman. <laughs> All right, whatever. Let's go with, we're checking in with Beeman. <laughs> All right, and Kuna Mankata is checking in with Bob, or I'm sorry, just with Beeman. <laughs> Colonel Muster with the Candlestick Park. Uh, what are you checking in with? You're not going to believe me when I say this, but I also almost wrote this question today. (laughs) Bob Beeman. All right. Well, the answer is Bob Beeman. Uh, The world record was set in 1991 by Mike Powell at 29 feet, four and one quarter inches, but that was at the world championships and not at the Olympics. This is widely considered to be an Olympic record that will probably never get beat. And Hakuna Mankata, how much did you wager on that one? We wagered 100 points. And Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park, how many did you wager? We wagered 100. All right, both teams getting 100 points. So after that first question, the scores are Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park at 670 and Hakuna Mankata at 615. We'll move on to question number two. Question number two in the category of NBA records. In 1997, the record was set for the fastest foul out of an NBA game by Bubba Wells. It took Bubba two minutes and 43 seconds to foul out what five-time NBA champion with six fouls? Nicole, I'm going to send this to you. I'm pretty sure this is it. Okay. And it goes with what you were saying, so... You good with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right. Matt, we're going to check in. Hakuna Mankata is checked in. Colonel Muster with a candlestick bark. You can talk it out. Okay, so we were thinking Dennis Rodman because he does he did win five times. He won with he won with the Pistons twice and then with the the Bulls three times. It would make sense to foul him for the for for reasons of uh, free throws, kind of like the hack of Shaq, right? And it can't be Shaq because he only has right. four championships. Yeah, I mean, it does make the most sense. It's what I was thinking initially. It just seems weird to focus on falling and that it wasn't great offensively. I mean, I'm sure there were other guys that couldn't shoot free throws either, but they weren't five time champions. Yeah. Did 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 Matt say a year? 1997. 97. Okay. Tech, yeah, I mean, he wasn't a five time champ yet, but he didn't say that so if you're gonna foul anybody on the right on the on that team it would definitely be right yeah it's probably a good strategy too i guess right you know keep yeah keep the ball out of jordan's hands yeah yeah let's do it all right we'll go with uh, dennis rodman and for how many points for 100 and hakuna mankata what was your answer and for how many points so we were thinking it was somebody on the bulls um and then i pretty sure Rodman was a five-time winner, so we checked in with uh, Dennis Rodman for 100 points. Well, um, your logic there, Dan and Scott, was great. However, the logic of Mavs coach Don Nelson was not great because Don, I'm sorry, because Dennis Rodman was a horrible free throw shooter, yes, but he ended up going nine for 12 from the line in a game that he went one for seven from the field. So, yes. (laughs) The answer is Dennis Rodman. There's a video out there that's about 10 minutes long, but it's worth every single second on YouTube of him. And basically all Bubba's doing is every time Rodman inbounds the ball on the opposite side of the court, he's just holding him. And so he 
<laughs> You're not even wanting him get to half court. What are you doing? That sounds so, amazing. It, it's pretty awesome. So yeah. So yeah, the answer is Dennis Rodman. Each team scoring a hundred points there. So a score update. Uh, Colonel Muster with the Candlestick Park uh, at 770 and Hakuna Makata at 715. And we'll move on to question number three in the uh, category of tennis records. Question number three. Winning a Grand Slam event is hard enough. Winning the same event twice is very difficult. But what tennis great won seven Wimbledon titles in eight years. We'll check in. Hakuna Mankata is checking in. Colonel Muster with the Candlestick Park, you can talk it out. We were originally talking about Borg. I think he won five in a row. I know he had a nice streak. I don't think he won seven out of eight, though, but I think Martina Navratilova did. So this this might, would this have spanned like late 70s into the 80s um during the 80s for most of the okay. 80s i thought her and graf went back and forth i think that she ushered graf in in wimbledon yeah okay graf yeah. may have been the one that broke it up but i think sure i don't think i'm gonna come off an average lover cool let's do it all right we'll check in martina navratilova colonel mustard with the candlestick park is checked in with martina navratilova for how many points 46 Hakuna Mankata, what did you check in with? So I was fairly confident it was Pete Sampras, but then now hearing Dan talk now, it makes me unsure of myself. Yeah, so we checked in with Pete Sampras. All right, then the answer is Pete Sampras. Yes! <laughs> well how done, point, How many points? Or 100, 100 points. 100. points. 100. So with that swing in points, after the third question... Akuna Mankata now leads with 815 points, and Colonel Musser with the Candlestick Park is at 724. I did love the strategy, though, guys. 46 points for question number three. Would have if you all would if you guys would have swept it, then uh, you would have won by one point. So <laughs> nice try. We'll also, see. my favorite. It's also my favorite defensive package. The 46. There you go. It wins championship. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Chip, singular. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And speaking of uh, NFL related banter, we'll move on to question number four, which is NFL record. 554 yards is the NFL record for the most amount of passing yards in a single game. This was set in 1951 by Hall of Famer Norm Van Brocklin against what? short-lived NFL franchise that disbanded just a year later. I was hoping you were going to ask for who set the record. <laughs> I knew that was too easy. I knew you would know that one. <laughs> you good with that? Yep, good with that. All right, Matt, we're going to check in. Hakuna Mankata is checked in. Colonel Muster with a candlestick park. You can talk it out. Scott, I've got a, a thought. I think this was a team. I think there was a team named after the Yankees in New York. This would have been right before the Jets got there. Right. Um, but it wasn't the Yankees, though. It was just the, the Yanks. I've heard of them. I live in the state, so. Yeah. I've heard of them being a thing that existed. I don't know in what capacity, but. And it wasn't the Titans yet. Right. Yeah, I'm good with that if you are. I'm not going to come up with anything better than that. All right. We, they need to get one wrong, so, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's NFL and NHL. I, I think we're, we're cooked here. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, go with, uh, let's go with the New York Yanks. Colonel Muster with the Candlestick Park is checked in with the New York Yanks for how many points? 100. And Hakuna Makata, what did you check in with them for how many points? So uh, we also wagered 100 points and um, – photographic memory for the win on this one uh, because I was looking at 500 yard passers months ago um, and it was the, the very top line is uh, Norm Van Brocklin 554 yards uh, a Los Angeles Rams versus the New York Yanks that is correct uh, the answer is the New York Yanks in that game 
Wisconsin legend Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch had nine catches for 173 yards and four touchdowns. The New York Yanks themselves started off as the Boston Bulldogs, then moved to New York and had a different name for a season. I forget what it was. And then changed the New York New York Yanks for two seasons. Then they ended up moving, becoming the Dallas Texans for one season. And then the remnants of them ended up going to Baltimore and becoming the Baltimore Colts. However, the NFL does not recognize the lineage of the ownership of the team. So they are not historically the uh, Colts franchise. So, yes, the answer is the New York Yanks. All of that extra talking, I know Scott loves it when I give lots and lots and lots of flavor text. It's his fave. You would be really great on a podcast where you guys just, like, tell us uh, and just teach us things. Hey, you learned today, right? What did you learn I, today? It would be very educational is what I'm saying. I well, learned. I See, I forgot it already. No, nope, Rob, <laughs> say it, Robert. <laughs> say He's it. Polish, so you know it ends with ski. Nope. I know, Robert I know, I know. Lewandowski. Lewandowski. <laughs> there you go, all right. <laughs> what I'm saying, make that podcast a thing. I will right. listen and I will learn. <laughs> After the fourth question, Hakuna Makata is at 915 points and Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park is at 824 points. Bringing us to question number five in the category of NHL records. Only one active NHL defenseman has scored more than 30 goals in a season, and that's Mike Green currently of the Edmonton Oilers. Only two men have ever scored more than 40 goals in a season. What man holds the record with 48? So, Nicole, how's it going? What's new? Huh? <laughs> it's going. <laughs> is is a, is a defenseman hockey records your, your wheelhouse? You didn't tell me whether or not it was. So. Who, who plays hockey, humans or horses? <laughs> Good, it's your partner's wheelhouse a little bit, kind of. Lace up some skates on Zenyatta. If she scored 48 goals, I would have been all over that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just made a new sport. Horsey hockey. Horse hockey. You Horse just hockey. created a new sport. That was uh, the Colonel Colonel Potter from uh, MASH. I always talked about horse hockey. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, we can check in. Well, uh, Hakuna Mankata can check in. Uh, Colonel Muster with a candlestick perk. Why don't you go ahead and talk it out? For me, defensemen that score a lot of goals goes back to either um, Bobby Orr or Paul Coffey. I bet it's one of them. Um, and we just had coffee on an episode not that long ago. But I really do think it's him. Something inside of me is is saying that um yeah you know i'm of no help so all right well i i guess we're gonna go paul coffee then all right colonel muster with the candlestick park has checked in with paul coffee for how many points 100 hakuna mankata what did you check in with and for how many points uh we checked in for 100 points um did it twice with the oilers paul coffee and the answer is paul coffee all told coffee had seven seasons with 29 or more goals. Even the great uh, Ray Bork, who holds most of the NHL defenseman records, only broke 29 once. And the other person to score over 40 goals as a defenseman in the NHL in one season is Eric? Bobby Orr. That's right. All right. The game has come to an end, and here are our final scores. Colonel Mustard with the Candlestick Park had 924 points. And our clipboard captains of the game who are receiving the coveted Frank Reich Award is Hakuna Mankata with 1,015 points. Good game, Nicole. (laughs) (laughs) No, you you got me through the horse racing. So that's that was huge. Thank you so much for the game. This was a lot of fun. Thank you for writing it, Matt. Thank you for playing with me, Eric. You are amazing at this. <laughs> the, 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 horse, the horse racing is my forte. You know, there's other bits and pieces I know here and there. I'm certainly, though, more of a, more of a sports generalist than most of you, except for the horse racing. The horse racing, I know. <laughs>
Hey, Nicole, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much this for having me. Fantastic. <laughs> Can you, uh, is there anything that you want to pump your Twitter feed or you're talking about horse racing somewhere or any columns that you've written or where you frequently write? I know you're quite the writer, so go ahead and tell us, please. Oh, sure. I'm, you know, a little bit of everywhere. You can find me on Twitter at Rogue Clown, on Instagram at Rogue Clown. You can find my podcast, Chicago Race of the Day, on Google, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you listen to find podcasts, or just on my website at blinkers-off.com. I write race analysis at thoroughcap.com, and I do a weekly column called Derby Remix on betamerica.com, where I talk about derby horses in light of songs that remind me of them. <laughs> going back to the music theme i do a little horse season yeah. music column horse season music, yeah. <laughs> which i seriously love it's the it's the weirdest thing and it makes me so happy to write it every single week <laughs> well that will have to be a a cat or a a quarter that i write when you guys are on for a special horse related episode will be uh horses in music so there you go horse with no name there you go yeah yeah Bull and, uh, Bull and Heather. Pony by Genuine. Bull and Heather by Sonic Youth, which was actually written for a horse who ran 13th in the Kentucky Derby in, I think, 1993. <laughs> <laughs> Betting on the Bull and Heather. <laughs> All right, uh, Dan, Eric, Scott, any final words before we uh, cut this, uh, cut it off? Oh, Scott, we were so close, man. I thought we had him. I did too. That's I fun. did too. We had a nice <laughs> six out of seven instead of seven out of eight. Yeah, we had a nice, you know, we got we got that theme, and I was like, all right, we're building a little bit of some cushion here, and we might uh we might get them. But uh, Nicole, thank you so much for coming on. Um, you've been a blast. Thank you also for your support and listening to all of our episodes, your activity on the bench. We really do appreciate it, and none of this happens if it's not for, you know, you and, and others that have been on. So seriously, thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing the show. I have a lot of fun listening to it every week. I learn a lot listening to it every week and I've learned a lot playing on it today. So thank you so much. This has been great. You're a great teammate. I appreciate you coming on. No, thank you so much, Eric. It was an honor to have you, you, Nicole. And you've, uh, you've learned one very important uh, piece of information and that is the greatest Polish uh, footballer of all time is <laughs> Scott Robert Lewandowski. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again, uh, Nicole, and for everyone. And thanks for listening to the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. And until next time, we'll keep it the best. Stretch, stretch, get on back there. They look up, you can put it on the board. Yes, yes. Into deep left center for Mitchell, and we'll see you tomorrow night. That great music you're listening to is by Justin Nozick. Thanks to him for producing that music for us. You've been listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media. We are at Benchwarmers TP.